Most of us are familiar with the standard narrative of how the universe began. There was an infinitely dense point of infinite temperature with no size called a singularity. This singularity exploded, creating all the space, energy, and matter that we consider to be our universe in an event called the Big Bang. Between 10 to the power of negative 36 seconds and 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds, space expanded exponentially, growing much larger in size. After this period, space continued to expand but at a much slower rate, and eventually we see the universe that we observe today. This is the inflationary Big Bang theory, the most popular and broadly accepted theory of how the universe began. But for a few physicists, the premier theory doesn't paint an accurate picture of the evolution of our universe. Rather, they say that the universe existed before that point, stretching forever into the past as well as the future. While the universe is expanding today, it was retracting in the time before the Big Bang. In this picture, the Big Bang isn't so much a bang but a bounce, a moment when a shrinking universe reversed course and began to grow. According to their theory, the universe could bounce again. Today's expansion could be followed by a collapse in the far future, followed by another bounce. Some physicists have suggested this bouncing could be infinite. This, of course, is counter to the way most cosmologists see it, where everything started with the Big Bang. But what is noteworthy here is this is not the only theory that dares to challenge the pinnacle theory of cosmology. Renowned physicist Brian Cox also challenges the Big Bang theory, asserting that something cannot emerge from nothing, adding a bit of tension. The James Webb Telescope has made a bunch of unexpected discoveries that contradict the notion that the Big Bang marked the beginning of the universe. All of these raise a question. If the Big Bang wasn't the beginning of the cosmos, then what was it? Could the universe start with a bounce or something else entirely? Join us as we dig deep into one of the thorniest issues in physics, the idea that the universe had a beginning or a day without a yesterday. As it was originally known, goes all the way back to George Lamatra in 1927. Although it's still a defensible position to state that the universe likely had a beginning, that stage of our cosmic history has very little to do with the hot Big Bang that described our early universe. Although many laypersons and even a minority of professionals still cling to the idea that the Big Bang means the very beginning of it all, that definition is out of date. The Big Bang now is not the birth of time and space. We know that today, in 2023. In fact, there's a ton of evidence that points to a non-singular origin to our universe. We never achieved those arbitrarily high temperatures. There's a cutoff instead. Our universe is best described by an inflationary period that occurred prior to the Big Bang, and the Big Bang is the aftermath of what occurred at the end of inflation. During inflation, the universe was completely empty. There were no particles, no matter, no photons, just empty space itself. That empty space had a huge amount of energy in it at every location, with the exact amount of energy slightly fluctuating over time by about one part in 30,000 on average. As the universe inflates, expanding in a rapid, relentless fashion. Those fluctuations get stretched to larger scales while new small-scale fluctuations are created. This superposition of fluctuations of small scales at top intermediate scales at top large scales at top superhorizon scales is one of the defining predictive features of cosmic inflation. This continues as long as inflation goes on, but inflation will come to an end randomly and not in all locations at once. In fact, if you lived in an inflating universe, you'd likely experience a nearby where inflation came to an end, while the space between you and it expanded exponentially. For a brief instant, you might even be able to detect what happened at the start of a Big Bang before that region disappeared entirely from view. In an initially relatively small region, perhaps no bigger than a humanized hamster ball but perhaps much larger, the energy inherent to space gets converted into matter and radiation. The conversion process is relatively fast, taking approximately 10 to the power of 33 seconds or so, a brief amount of time but nonetheless one that is not instantaneous. As the energy bound up in space itself gets converted into particles, antiparticles, photons, and more, the temperature starts to rapidly rise from just a few degrees above absolute zero to perhaps 20K or so over that same brief time interval. Because the amount of energy that gets converted is so large, everything will be moving close to the speed of light. All quanta will behave as radiation with so much kinetic energy inherent to them, regardless of whether the particles are massless or massive. It doesn't matter under these conditions. 
This conversion process is known as reheating and signifies when inflation comes to an end and the stage known as the hot big bang begins. In terms of the expansion speed, you'll witness a tremendous change from all prior behavior when the hot big bang first commences. In an inflationary universe, space expands exponentially, with more distant regions accelerating away relentlessly. But when inflation ends and the universe reheats and the hot Big Bang starts, more distant regions will now recede from you more and more slowly as time goes on. From an outside perspective, the part of the universe where inflation ends sees the expansion rate there drop, while the inflating regions surrounding it see no such drop. Under inflation, the distance to any object would double after a certain amount of time. And once that same amount of time elapses, that distance doubles yet again and again and again. The process is relentless. But once the Big Bang begins, all of that changes as the expanding universe immediately slows down once the first moment of expansion elapses. Probability-wise, it's extremely likely that from the perspective of whatever region of inflating space you're in prior to the Big Bang, you'll experience inflation ending in nearby regions many times. These locations where inflation ends will quickly fill with matter, antimatter, and radiation and expand more slowly than the still inflating regions do leaving you in the inflating region as a typical region within space-time, dominating its volume. These regions where hot Big Bangs occur will expand away from all the other locations where inflation still goes on exponentially, meaning they will very quickly recede from one another's view. In the standard inflationary picture, because of this expansion rate change, there's virtually no chance that any two universes where separate hot Big Bangs occur will ever collapse or interact. Finally, the region where we will come to live gets cosmically lucky, and inflation comes to an end. For us, the energy that was inherent to space itself gets converted to a hot, dense, and almost uniform sea of particles. The only imperfections and the only departures from uniformity correspond to the quantum fluctuations that existed and were stretched across the universe during inflation. The positive energy quantum fluctuations will correspond to initially over-dense regions, while the negative energy fluctuations get converted into initially under-dense regions. But that's still enough to serve as the eventual seeds of cosmic structure. We cannot observe these density fluctuations today as they were when the universe first underwent the hot Big Bang. There are no visual signatures we can access from that early time. The first one we've ever accessed comes from 380,000 years later after they've undergone countless interactions. Even at that, we can extrapolate back what the initial density fluctuations were and find something extremely consistent with the story of cosmic inflation. The temperature fluctuations that are imprinted on the first picture of the universe, the cosmic microwave background, give us confirmation of how the Big Bang began. However, there are a lot of inconsistencies between the cosmic microwave background and our current model of cosmology. We're missing something. These can be summarized in four anomalies. First, on very large scales, the universe isn't acting like we think it should. Second, light from the cosmic microwave background will be lensed by matter in between us and the cosmic microwave background. This means that matter acts like a giant lens, bending and changing the amplitude of the light behind it. The amount that this happens is not consistent with our current model of the universe. This is such a significant problem it has sometimes been called a crisis for cosmology. Third. The two hemispheres of the cosmic microwave background sky have different average temperatures. This doesn't make a lot of sense, since we believe that the universe should have started out uniform on average. And last, the value of the Hubble constant, which describes how fast the universe is expanding, is different whether we measure it from the cosmic microwave background or from more nearby stars. Taken together, these anomalies mean we are missing something fundamental in our understanding of the universe. The answer may lie in loop quantum cosmology, LQC. Loop quantum cosmology arises from loop quantum gravity. In loop quantum gravity, gravity itself is made of particles called quanta. These quanta come together to form the fabric of space-time. In this model of the universe, there is a smallest size of space itself, the Planck scale or 10 to the power of negative 35 meters. Nothing, not even space itself, can be smaller than this. This means that the Big Bang couldn't exist in a universe with loop quantum cosmology. The universe could never get down to an infinitely small, infinitely dense point close to the Big Bang. When the universe was very small, really weird things happen mathematically. Infinities start to arise and threaten to tear the fabric of space-time itself. 
it's at these locations where loop quantum gravity can come in to provide corrections to the physics we already know. As Dr. Asaker has shown, one of the original proponents of loop quantum gravity, when these corrections are applied, the Big Bang singularity goes away. In its place is a cosmological bounce. Instead of coming from nothing, the universe can go through endless cycles of expansion and contraction, all in a perfectly non-singular fashion. This idea isn't entirely new. People have explored the idea of a big bounce for decades. In Hindu cosmology, the universe is immortal, going through endless cycles of expansion and contraction. But this presents a problem. Every time the universe contracts, entropy or disorder goes up. This is a statement of the second law of thermodynamics, and it states that the universe we're in now is always getting less useful energy. After an infinite number of bounces, there wouldn't be any energy left to have anything like a universe at all. But this remains a powerful idea and shows the incredible power of loop quantum cosmology. Ultimately, whether the universe had a beginning or is eternal remains a contentious debate in cosmology, shaped by ongoing discoveries and theoretical advancements. Loop quantum cosmology, LQC, proposes a fundamental shift from the classical understanding of cosmology particularly concerning the origin and evolution of the universe. At the heart of LQC lies the concept of quantum geometry, which suggests that spacetime itself has a discrete, granular structure at extremely small scales, on the order of the Planck length, about 10 to the power of negative 35 meters. This granularity prevents the existence of singularities, such as the infinitely dense point hypothesized in the standard Big Bang theory. Instead of a singularity, LQC posits a bounce where the universe undergoes a phase of contraction before bouncing back and beginning to expand again. The idea of a bounce addresses some of the conceptual issues in cosmology, including the origin of the universe and the nature of time itself. According to LQC, time can be traced back beyond the bounce, suggesting that the universe may have existed in some form before our current expanding phase. This concept challenges the notion of a singular beginning and opens up possibilities for a cyclic universe model where contraction and expansion cycles could repeat indefinitely. One of the key features of LQC is its ability to predict observable phenomena that deviate from standard cosmological predictions. For instance, LQC provides insights into the behavior of the early universe that may explain anomalies in the cosmic microwave background, CMB, radiation such as unexpected temperature fluctuations or asymmetries. These predictions offer testable hypotheses that could potentially reconcile discrepancies between theoretical models and observational data, providing a new framework for understanding the universe's origin and evolution. In addition to its implications for cosmology, LQC also intersects with quantum gravity, a theoretical framework seeking to unify general relativity and quantum mechanics. Unlike classical general relativity, which breaks down at the singularity, LQC introduces quantum corrections that smooth out the fabric of spacetime at extreme conditions. This quantum smoothing not only resolves mathematical infinities, but also suggests a fundamentally different narrative of cosmic history, where the universe emerges from a quantum regime rather than a classical singularity. Moreover, LQC incorporates insights from loop quantum gravity, LQG, which posits that spacetime is composed of discrete loops or networks akin to a fabric woven from quantum threads. These loops interact with each other, defining the geometry of spacetime on a microscopic scale. By applying LQG principles to cosmology, LQC bridges the gap between quantum theory and cosmological observations, offering a more comprehensive picture of the universe's dynamics from its earliest moments to its current expansion. The theoretical framework of LQC continues to evolve with ongoing research and computational simulations that explore its implications for cosmic evolution. Scientists are actively investigating how LQC can account for the formation of structures in the universe, such as galaxies and clusters, and whether it can provide new insights into phenomena like dark matter and dark energy. In conclusion, while the Big Bang theory is the prevailing model for the universe's origin, Alternative theories like loop quantum cosmology challenge conventional wisdom and offer new avenues for exploration. By integrating quantum principles with cosmological phenomena, LQC provides a fresh perspective on cosmic history and the fundamental nature of spacetime. Future observations and experiments, including advancements in astrophysical instrumentation and theoretical developments in quantum gravity, 
will continue to shape our understanding of the universe's origins and its ultimate fate.